when I went into the room, there wasn't in, in Los Angeles, there wasn't a real to real tape recorder. There was a Walkman. <laughs> Welcome, friends and fans, to another edition of GalaxyCon Live, where we are bringing the convention experience directly to you. And today, we are going back to the tale as old as time with four amazingly talented performers from Disney's Beauty and the Beast. So without further ado, let's wish upon a star and bring out today's Disney's guests. Our first guest is an actor, producer, and cinematographer whose body of work includes Jumanji, Sonic the Hedgehog, and The Borrowers. Today, he joins us as the voice of Chip. Please welcome Bradley Michael Pierce. Hey everybody! Hey Patty! Hey Bradley, how you doing? Doing great, thank you. It's been uh, it's been a long time since I've been able to talk to fans, so this is gonna, I'm really looking forward to this. Uh, I'm so glad so glad to have you here. And uh, yeah, like I said, we geeked out a little earlier. You've got the haunted mansion represented behind you there. The uh, famous ghost story authors, of course. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, it's a collection of tiki mugs, actually. Uh, my partner, Bella, and I, we collect them wherever we go. Um, the two busts up there are the Club 33 versions and then uh, Trader Sam's Hatbox Ghost in the middle. But yeah, lots of cool collection back here. Absolutely, absolutely. And I just want to say, um, I really enjoyed your your body of work. I mean, Jumanji, a lot of fun. And the borrowers, I... I I was I have I have, a, I have a fondness for the borrowers. I really do. Well, thanks. It's um both of those were great for very different reasons, but um the borrowers is one of those ones where the people who have seen it and loved it really loved it. It's got a you know really strong fans of that movie. But then there's so many people who's oh I didn't even they made that movie with John Goodman. It, it's yeah. it's so under the radar for so many people. It, it it is it is a sleeper that has yet to awaken. That's what I refer to movies like that, especially from the '90s. For some reason, there's a I don't know what it is, but uh, we'll work on getting more people awareness of that. So, but Bradley, thanks for joining us here. It's such a pleasure to have you. Of course, glad to be here. Mm -hmm. And our next guest, he is an actor, actor, and opera singer whose work on film and stage includes Phantom, Jekyll and Hyde, and The Most Happy Fella. Today, he joins us as the voice of the expectorating expert guest on. Please welcome Richard White. Hi, Patty. It's nice to be here. I so rarely get introduced as the as the spitter, but I appreciate that. Yeah, I was, I was really like, well, uh, the muscle head. Uh, the, what, and for, uh, from day one, Gaston was to me was sold as especially good as expectorating. That, yeah, one of my great skills. Absolutely, uh, <laughs> absolutely. And the term "beloved" and Disney villain very rarely go together, but again, your performance and, and, and Gaston really does make that bridge. Well, I'm so glad to hear it. Villain, you say? I'm so surprised to hear you say that. I, I think of him as the hero myself. But... Oh well, of course, I mean, you know, <laughs> so, you know, certainly, certainly antlers and decorating and everything else. So, Richard, how are you doing in your corner of the world? Well, I'm doing great. I'm I'm on the other side of the continent from uh, uh, most of y'all, and uh, we're not quite as hot as you are, but. Uh, it, it, it's uh, it's gorgeous here. We're having a wonderful time. Absolutely, I was so glad to have you here. Uh, especially oh, glad to be here because uh, it's been so long since I've been able to see these people. We we uh, we used to get together fairly frequently, and uh, it's it's been a while now. So even if it has to be uh, through this medium, we're, we're we're really happy to be able to do it. It's a technology that gives us good stuff. And speaking of good stuff, our next guest, he is an actor, filmmaker, and teacher whose body of work includes Ice Castles, The Chosen, and Exo Squad. Today, he joins us as the voice of Prince Adam as human and the beast. Please welcome Robbie Benson. Hey, hey. hey. nice to see you, Patty. Good to be uh, here. Good to see you, Robbie. I have been a fan of yours for so long and, and just... You really had a you really have a really good body of work, and you've worked with so many actors that that I admire: uh, Newman, uh, Burt Reynolds, Richard Widmark in that movie that I won't mention. But uh, <laughs> fun in that movie. I, I I I you know what? I enjoyed it too, but it's got a reputation for being not as good as the other National Lampoon movies. And oh, we'll <laughs> that's okay. You know this that was only a very small part of the of that movie. And um, the reason I love that movie is because I asked them if I could write um, the death scene. And I have the longest death scene, I think, in cinema history. It's, I, my character will not die. He just keeps getting up and he won't die. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> I remember that. Well, R- Robbie, thank you so much for joining us here today. Like I said, man, just, just a big fan of all of it. So thanks for being here. Thank you. Uh, and finally, gentlemen, uh, she is an actress, singer, and artist whose credits include The Twisted Tales of Felix the Cat, Mona the Vampire, and The Legend of Prince Valiant. Today, she joins us as the original voice of Belle in Disney's Beauty of the Beast. Please welcome back the always lovely Paige O'Hara. <laughs> oh, it's great to be here. How are you, Patty? I am well, Paige. How have you been doing? I'm, I'm a little surprised by that intro. I, I, I don't think anybody's mentioned Prince Valiant. That Robbie and I did together, by the way. You did. <laughs> yes, you did. Yes, you did. No, I, I no, I. That was that was a very that was a very very solid series, but nothing with Prince Valiant has ever been able to take off in America. So <laughs> even though it was an American comic strip, but it's huge in Europe. It's it's. It but, is. It is. Yeah. So absolutely. <laughs> Paige, how are you? I'm good considering I'm in Las Vegas and it's 115 degrees today. So <laughs> you have to live in the air conditioning or in your pool. You go outside and you feel like you're in a sauna. But uh, it's all good. It's all good. It's good to see my friends again. Yeah. It's, it's, cool. good, to you. Oh, cool. it's, it's so, good to see you. How, how's the art coming along? It's, it's great. In fact, I'm doing the artwork for the 30th anniversary DVD re-release. So wow. it's... Uh, the painting, it's got it's got you in there, Chip. It's got all the characters in the painting this time. So it's fun. Oh, oh, very nice. Well, Paige, Bradley, Richard, Robbie, welcome to the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Uh, our team is going to the chat room right now, pulling out the questions for us. In the meantime, I would love to just start with this. I would just love to hear how Beauty of the Beast uh, began for each of you. Well, yeah, Paige, you should start this one off. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, we all we all knew Howard and Alan Menken. You know, we just, we all saw Little Mermaid. We were so ecstatic to see that our these great Broadway geniuses were bringing their talents to animation. Animation was essentially dead at the time, and they are really the ones that brought it back. Um, Disney, went along with Howard and Alan, and so when I heard about Beauty and the Beast, I knew that it was going to be an incredible project because of the people involved. So I auditioned with 500 other actresses and it got down to like about 10 of us and then about five of us and then two of us and then myself. And uh, I was pretty ecstatic about it, to be honest with you. I, I, But I didn't really get excited enough until Robbie was cast a month later because I didn't have a beast. I started recording, you know, Richard and I, we were all set to go in the beginning, but they hadn't found their beast yet. So when Rob joined us, it, the whole the whole chemistry came together. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Absolutely. So Richard, you were already on board at that point. How'd this start for you? Well, uh, like like Paige said, you know, it was uh, well. First of all, they they Little Mermaid uh, had already made its big splash, as it were, yeah. and uh, so we all knew what what this was going to be like. But uh, they the way they approached it was by a blind audition. Uh, you walked into a room, and there, sitting in the middle of the room, was a reel-to-reel tape recorder uh, and a technician uh, who said, "Read this, sing whatever you're going to sing." And you know, he he put it on the, the tape, and they sent it away. So you really didn't feel like you had uh, as much personal uh, uh, investiture at that point. You just put it out there and, and waited. And uh, when the word came down, you know, you did the dance of joy. Because as, as Paige said, we all really had an idea of what this was going to be like. We'd seen, first of all, Disney had the reputation for doing wonderful animated films like this. But secondly, we saw what this team was, was about. Uh, I had worked with uh, Alan previous to that. I had not worked with uh, Howard, but we all knew what they were capable of. Uh, and so we were all thrilled, I think. I think I speak for us all. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, I came into this... Uh, after f- production was still in full, was already in full swing. Everybody else had already recorded. Um, and my audition was uh, originally just one line and it was mama. There's a girl in the castle. That was it. That was the wow. only chip line in the original script. And um, it was a couple months after I auditioned that they called me in to actually record it. And at that point, it was like three lines. They had added a couple more pieces and they just kept adding pieces. Um, So when I first auditioned, I had no idea what the part was going to end up being. It was just this little single line 
in uh, in a very minor character, but it ended up being a lot of fun. <laughs> obviously, obviously, and a lot of people. But he's being modest about this. Don Hahn <laughs> said that from the very first time we recorded, they all fell in love with him and said we have to make his part bigger. And that's what happened. So and it's I... your talent and you. They love you. <laughs> the world loves Chip. So there you go. And and Thank let's you. not let's not forget Chip has the last line of dialogue in the film. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know, there's the song afterwards, but yeah, do I have still sleep in the cupboard? You know, which was oh. a beautiful button to the story. Yeah. <laughs> so, absolutely. so Robbie, how how this come about? I, I've re I've read I've read versions of it, but I'd love to hear yours. Yeah, mine was uh, fascinating. Really, I, I had been I made a movie and was teaching in South Carolina. Um, made a movie called Modern Love. And um, and my uh, tenure was up at South Carolina, and I decided I wanted to come back to LA. And uh, so Carla and I, uh, you know, moved back to LA. And I and as soon as I got to LA, I I was asked if I was interested in auditioning, you know, for the part of the Beast. And when I went into the room, there wasn't. In, in Los Angeles, there wasn't a real to real tape recorder. There was a Walkman. <laughs> um, and every, you know, I remember walking into the room. It was very similar to an experience I had when I was younger during Apocalypse Now, where like every actor that you could ever dream of was sitting in the room. <laughs> and, um, and I could hear some of their auditions. And when I walked in, First of all, when I read the lines, I didn't think of it as as a cartoon. It seemed like it was a Broadway show to me. So suddenly everything became very real. It didn't, it wasn't over the top. It was like, give an honest performance here, you know? And, and understand what's funny. That's always important. Um, but when I walked in and I saw the Sony Walkman, for those who don't remember, it was a... <laughs> I need tape player, but it had because I've been a sound engineer since I was very young, which is weird. Um, <laughs> I uh, I knew that you know compression is is like it can either be your worst enemy or your best friend, and I heard all these people just blowing out the mic, and what will happen in a mic. Is probably what can happen here with us with these, you know, computer mics. The signal will just shut down. The bigger you get, the signal shuts down. And and I thought, well, if I want to play this real, and uh, and I don't want to shut down the power of the beast, I'm going to bring it right here and do everything, you know, right into the mic, and 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 believe it, and then walk out either having trusted my instincts and getting a chance or, you know, whoa, I'm gone. And, um, and then just like Paige said, you know, like five or six more auditions and finally into the real sound stage, you know, where we're, where we're actually recording. Um, it, it, it was then re remarkably rewarding. And, and, you know, it was so unreal. I, I'll be honest. I kept thinking, when am I going to get fired? <laughs> I was, you know, because I knew what I could do and I knew what I could do and what was coming across over the mic. But I was still, you know, I have a Y at the end of my name. I was young. Robbie Benson. You know, no one thought I'd be the beast. I, there were you know, James Earl Jones was out there. It's like, what am I doing? <laughs> and so um, I literally kept thinking, I'm going to get fired, you know, but I'll keep giving it my all. And um, and I never got fired. So um, that was lucky. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 initial, that initial thing where you walk out, uh, walk to the audition, sitting in the hall like you do in New York, you know, at, at an audition, there were, I mean, it was just wall-to-wall -wall people, and you, you're used to seeing a lot of the same players uh, because 
the leading men are here, the character men are there, and, and so on and so forth. But in this case, no. Every, you know, Gaston Absolutely. is everything from the little round guy to the big tall guy, you know, and I've fit somewhere in between, you know, trying to figure out where I fit in this whole thing. But it was, they didn't care what you looked like, you know. You know what? Lucky that Robbie, lucky. you just wouldn't think the beast, and yet. <laughs> yeah, but lucky for the movie, each one of you, Don Hahn, everyone associated with Beauty and the Beast were smart enough. I mean, each one of your performances gives me the chills. I mean, you do remarkable work. So, you know, they were, they're very bright people, you know. You need to make sure to remember to include yourself in that, Robbie, because what you brought is something that nobody else could have. Oh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, man. Absolutely. I, 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 I would agree with this. And, and again, uh, as a fan of the film and speaking for everybody in our virtual audience, I have to thank you all. I, 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 I thank you for your talents. I thank you for your professionalism and I thank you for the performances you brought to this film. Cause it really has created this, this, with this legacy. It is a universal film. It is one of the few films that I consider to be perfect in the sense that anybody can enjoy this film. It doesn't matter what you're into. Even if you're somebody that's gruff, like I don't watch cartoons. They enjoy this film. Oh yeah, I like that. Oh yeah, I like that one. That one's okay. You know, so that's it. It, it truly, it truly, absolutely is. And um, and thank you, thank you all, really. And mm -hmm. and I would thank all your peers, and I want to thank everyone uh, behind the scenes, the animators, the writing, and everything on else. And it's still one of my favorite Disney posters of all time. The first teaser one, the, the most beautiful story ever told. Yeah, I love that one. The poster. Yeah. I I truly love, and that and that was the one that after that was the one that made me think. They, they're up to something with this. You know, when I first saw that poster, it's like, yeah, yeah, they're really going for this one. And we were all proved right. So great work as always. And we are going to go to our audience questions. So let's go ahead and roll our first one. And this comes from Scott. And they want to know, what do you think your characters will be doing today in 2021? Hmm. Wearing a mask. <laughs> yes. Wearing a mask and writing books. I think Belle would have been an author. I think so. Oh, absolutely. Um, I don't know that Gaston would be wearing a mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know, you're right. Why hide this beautiful face? Right? <laughs> yeah, I, I like that. You could um, expect others to, yeah. <laughs> Ship would probably be uh, working in some sort of tea room or possibly even a coffee shop, uh, you know, like head barista type character, I think. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, he would have these. <laughs> the, the beast would be going to the Olympics as an athlete. Okay. Yeah. What what event do you suppose? Uh, shot put. Of shot course. Put. You took the. I thought Whoa. that. Boom! <laughs> discus maybe I was too. Wolf wrestling <laughs> myself, but. Uh, yeah. <laughs> ah, re wrestling. Yeah, that that be that too. So yeah, a lot of things. <laughs> Scott, thank you. A very fun question to start us off with. What do we have next? And here's one from Aaron who wants to know, oh, what do you love the most about your character? Well, that's easy for me. My character loves himself so much. And that, that, <laughs> makes, that makes him a joy to play uh, and, and, and a joy to be. So uh, I, I, uh, what's not to love about Gaston? <laughs> He doesn't have to suffer consequences, <laughs> at least in his day-to-day -day life. <laughs> yeah. I, well, I, I love that that Belle saw right through you, too. I love that. She saw right past him. You know, people don't realize Belle was an old maid at that time and period. She, to be the age she was and not married, and she could care less. And I love that about her. It wasn't, it wasn't about that. I love her compassion. She's strange but special. Absolutely. <laughs> Robbie. Oh, I, I, I just love any chance to make people laugh. You know, I mean, honest laughter, not just putting in some silly joke or something, but the idea of uh, that the, the beast is actually has a sense of humor and, and it sometimes doesn't even realize it. But uh, mm -hmm. but I just I, I love I love that they allowed us to make people laugh. That's awesome. Um, my favorite part of Chip is uh, the curiosity and um, not necessarily fearlessness, but maybe impulsiveness. 
that always worked out. Like that was one of the things that was great about Chip. Always Chipper, <laughs> always happy, but uh, always curious, trying to learn. Yeah, very much so. S still a little confused at grown up affairs of the heart. <laughs> Yes. Well, what's yeah. going on? Oh, this is good. This is good. It's like, <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> what? What's there, mama? Yeah. I can't uh, even go close to the voice anymore. I shouldn't have tried. Uh, oh. <laughs> uh, it was that pretty was. good. That was. And Aaron, thank you. Great question. What do we have next? And here's one from Isabel. Who is your favorite Disney villain? Hmm. I'd like to take that. I, yeah. My favorite is everyone's guest on. <laughs> I, I have to say that. <laughs> I'm not kidding. Guest on. I, I, guest on. Well, to, to be fair, if I were to answer seriously, I, I would have to say my the, the first Disney villain that I knew uh, was the Wicked Witch. And so uh, in um, um, Snow White. Snow White, yes. Uh, so, I mean, something to live up to. But Gaston, I mean, please. Yes. <laughs> um, I'm a big fan of Maleficent. I think she's got an amazing backstory. I think her um, the the way she is used, uh, both in Sleeping Beauty and then the way Disney has used her sense in other stories, it's a, just a brilliantly written character. I like Maleficent a lot. I agree. I've talked to Don Hahn about that because he produced, you know, Angelina Jolie in that. So I got to hear all the stories, but I love the way Angelina portrayed her in both of the films. Uh, I thought that was really interesting to see. There again, a villain who has more, a lot more to her than just being a villain, you know. So, mm -hmm. but, but Gaston, you're still my favorite. <laughs> uh, indeed. Yeah, Gaston, Maleficent, good. And for me, the coachman from Pinocchio. Well, that's pretty mm -hmm. Because oh, because he's still out there. Oh. He never gets a come up in sir or anything like that. He just yeah. So, and Isabel, thank you. Great question. Uh, what is next? And from Adam, do you have a favorite line from Beauty and the Beast that you recorded? Um, I think one of the more fun ones uh, for me was see I told you when he pops up out of the. Um, bathtub uh and he spits the water through his teeth now it's not because of the line it's because of this backstory to it um i had just hung out at my uncle's house in arizona he had a hot tub and he taught me how to spit water between my teeth <laughs> so i thought it would be great to show the voice directors that um in the booth with the mic nearby because that's what i did when i was like eight years old um but it uh they ended up like animating that spit and and keeping it and asking me to hit that S a little harder. So see, I told you. So the story behind that line is why that's my favorite. Awesome. <laughs> I love that. Oh, uh, mine is easy. Mine's easy. That's done. You're positively primeval. <laughs> that's <laughs> However, I did have one that got cut, and, and Emma Watson used it in the live action, was at the end when Robbie turns into this beautiful prince, and I say, do you think you could grow a beard? I walked <laughs> up in the studio when I said that, and all these years later, Emma gets to put it back in. So. Mm, I heard her say that. I, <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, was, nice. Richard, you got a favorite line? I just uh, that this the scene uh, with um, actually the whole scene uh, where uh, Gaston is uh, first talking to uh, to Belle and, and takes her book from her. It's, How can you make pictures? <laughs> <laughs> it's it all to him. It's so it, explanatory, isn't it? <laughs> it, and it? And it's and it's a masterpiece of animation and character work. Just the expressions are just so flawless i mean bells like slide i look like oh here we go again uh, yeah that's yeah, just great so robbie how about you favorite uh, line yeah i think after uh he's groomed and he says he you know he feels stupid you know <laughs> i had fun that was fun very good adam thank you great question what do we have next? And here's one from Dan. Uh, aside from your own, you know, and, and that, that's, that's, but uh, who is your favorite 
Disney character. Um, I, I'm just going to jump in here because this is easy for me. Um, it, a, a, and I'm not being silly or kissing butt. Uh, it's Gaston. That's just my absolute favorite everything. I just think that's brilliant. Everything that was done from Richard to everything you did, Richard, you're, but everything that was written, uh, it's just, it's, it's just brilliant stuff. It's great work. I'm flattered that you would say that, but I have to admit that I, I feel like I was given so much. Uh, he, he was relatively easy to do because there's, it's all on the page and it's all in the music and it's all in those wonderful lyrics. Yes. Uh, it's I, just so beautiful. Uh, it was fascinating how great the team. early drafts, he was such a different character. It was supposed to be the fop and, yeah. and everything else. We went through a lot of different iterations. I, I imagine you've probably seen uh, them all, but uh, uh, everything from a, a, a big, strong... Uh, Bumbler to uh, uh, the, the, the yeah the uh, <laughs> yeah yeah uh, to 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 the magnificent creature he ended up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my daughter was uh, about five or six uh, when we were doing that, and and she would I would show her the the various renderings of the character as we went, and she would like to pick the ones as she went. I think she kind of liked the mustache for herself. <laughs> there. Uh, oh, absolutely fair. Uh, so Bradley, you got a favorite Disney character? Um, I think Peter Pan. Mm. I think honestly, uh, he's a character that I really like and, and he has flaws. Um, but he's, he's fun and he's, again, it's got that curiosity and joy that, uh, I think is so important. Um, so I, Peter Pan's my favorite. Right on. Nice. Cricket. Oh. Yeah. I mean, so. he, he was he, he was he was so wise and yet so 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 young and so fun and so I, I just I love that whole movie. But uh, again, that was that was my era. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, nice. Paige, got a favorite? Well, I have two. I have a female favorite and a male favorite. The Beast, Robbie, without a question, is my favorite of the male characters. Um, that's why she fell in love with him. And I fell in love with Robbie as Robbie. Um, but my other favorite is my favorite movie of all time, which is Mary Poppins. Oh, um, yeah. yeah. Mary Poppins. And I was so blessed to get to know Julie Andrews a little bit, spend some time with her at Disney World and got to tell her. And she was royalty. She's everything, everything that you imagine her to be. She's and more. So those are my two favorites. Those are some very good favorites. <laughs> Dan, thank you. Wonderful question. What do we have next? And from Megan. Ooh, what non-Disney cartoon character would you like to voice? Hmm. I have one. Good. I'm a diehard Scarlett Johansson fan. <laughs> Black Widow, I can't wait to see it. I love the Avengers. I would love to do the voice of Black Widow. Ooh. Oh. Oh, That's I didn't realize it was a cartoon. Okay. <laughs> um, this is a tough one. I think uh, I'd like to do um, not exactly a cartoon, but uh, video game voices. Like um, Master Chief would be a fun one. I think he could, you know. There, there's an energy there and an intensity that I think would be a lot of fun to play as a character. Yeah. So um, a character like that, potentially even that character would be a lot of fun or anything in the star Wars universe would be amazing as well, just because I'm a fan. Nice. Definitely works. Robbie, you could pick wow. a. No, I, I don't even have a clue. That's a great question. I, I don't I don't have a clue what voice. I mean, when I, I think of things like that, I think of them as opportunities and I see the opportunity and I just want to run toward it. But, yeah, you know, just sitting here, um, I'd rather create something yeah. than think about, yeah. you know, so that's that's maybe cool little stuck up or I don't know what that is. No, 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 no. It's, it's, and that this is, 
this is this is this is the performer's life where yeah you can dream about the roles and stuff or in your case you're creating your own work yeah yeah i'd much rather that would be cool yeah well along the same lines we know when i when i think of the cartoon characters that i uh, grew up loving i hear mel blank's voice <laughs> oh yeah and and you know so, so to try and uh, I, I, you couldn't possibly go there. He has already been there. Uh, yeah. So I, I kind of agree with, with Robbie that the chance to do something new and different, uh, something that's yours, something yeah. that, uh, you know, where you don't have another voice in your in your ear. Uh, right. You're not trying to do an impression of somebody. You're getting to yeah. be a character, which is... How, how would you do an impression of Mel Blanc? He was an impression of... of he was the litmus paper you know it, whatever you whatever you put in he might come out a different you know color it's his ph balance it's like he, could <laughs> it. he was he was a genius yeah yeah a lot of people don't realize uh, the career he had on radio as well as the animation stuff and the characters he brought on that on the Jack Benny show and everything else. So yeah, it's uh... And here's one from Brendan who wants to know, what do you think your character's favorite Disney park attraction would be? Hmm. Yeah. I have no clue. <laughs> oh my God. Um, I think Chip would love Space Mountain. Yes. You guys gotta try this thing. I mean, he'd be all about the speed and the turns. Um, I mean, maybe even something like uh, Splash Mountain, or you know, I think he'd be into the coasters. I think he'd be all about uh, the <clears throat> Tower of Terror or uh, Operation Breakout. You know, I think that would be Chip would be about the roller coasters. I think Space Mountain would be his favorite. I think uh, Beast. It would definitely be uh, small world, small world, small world. You know, <laughs> it, it makes sense that he would want to ride that. Ride. Um, also, the reason I say that is that ride. Oh my god! Um, <laughs> so my children, you know, because they were very young during Beauty and the Beast, different iterations of Beauty and the Beast. And um, we ended up going on Small World. <laughs> <laughs> so, but I just, it's very funny to see the bees sit, sitting in, in Small World. Yeah. Uh, the delight of small children and the bane of parents. <laughs> <laughs> I think I found out what Belle would like would be soaring because she'd get to see the world and see her adventures. Yeah. Yeah, I think soaring would be her favorite. Definitely. My personal yeah. page is, is the Peter Pan ride, but Soaring, I love that too. But I think Belle would love Soaring. Cool. What about you, Richard? Oh, there's no question. Gaston has his own tavern. <laughs> of course. <That's, laughs> yes, yes, he does. <laughs> you would have a hard time uh, dragging him out of there where he could receive his, his adoring uh, fans and, and, and uh, young lady. <laughs> As well as should. Brendan, fun question. Thank you so much. Uh, what do we have next? And here's one from Amber who wants to know, oh, do you have any memory stories from your time working with Angela Lansbury? We all have the same memory uh, of, of the, the recording session where she came in to, to sing the title song. Yes. Oh, gosh. That was just well, did you have to preface it, Richard, and tell him that she'd been out all night long because her flight got canceled right. so she had no sleep and they mm -hmm. said you can cancel this you can we can have you do this another day she said no no i'll do it and then tell the rest of it the one take well, she, she was yeah. very nervous about it you know she but she wanted to do it she she was nervous about singing at all which which i just can't believe uh and uh she walked in under all of those circumstances that you've just described and, and laid it down in one take yeah, I mean, just, wow. just unbelievable. One yeah. take. Yeah. And, you, and I don't think there was a dry eye in the studio. I really no. don't think so. It was no, so I'll tell you, though, an another thing that I uh, really loved about her and uh, was uh, when we did the um, uh, the Academy Awards. Uh, yes. And uh, there was a lot of uh, um, controversy uh, about uh, our characters being uh, considered for awards and, and our, our movie 
being considered for awards because it was animated. And uh, she spoke up uh, very bravely for us, and, and I was very grateful. Uh, she was quite appreciative of us and, and uh, quite wonderful in speaking. <laughs> I, I, I do remember that. I remember a, an actress whose name I will not mention. Um, yeah, was a little critical of, of Beauty and the Beast and its nominations. And sorry, it's a movie. <laughs> um, <laughs> but then, like a year later, all of those big stars wanted to be doing animated films. So yeah, yeah, yeah they, all, they were they were beating at the door, weren't they? There's yeah. been a huge shift in that too. The amount of uh, respect and love given from the Academy to voice acting and animation is changed dramatically, starting with, starting with us. Um, and actually, do you remember recording the, uh, all of the different iterations of the actual presentation you guys did, uh, for best animated short? I think it was, it was, uh, the beast and bell presenting the award. Chip was the one who actually uh, read off the answer. They had me read all of the nominees as the winner so that even I didn't know which right. iteration was going to run but right, right. off of the Angela story. But yeah, that was a really, that was interesting. <laughs> oh, I'll just bet. So, oh, wow. One take. I, I'm, I'm in awe of that as yeah. if I wasn't in awe of her before. Yeah. Wow. So Amber, thank you. Great question. What do we have next? Yeah, there's one from Tony. Oh, do any of you have a dream role you have yet to achieve? That's a question that I get asked a lot. Uh, I, I work primarily as a stage actor, and uh, the, the roles uh, available to a stage actor are just uh, are many and, and, and varied and wonderful. Uh, but honestly, as a stage actor, your favorite has to be the one you're doing. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I, I don't, I, 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 it's easy to focus on that because it's so all encompassing. I, I don't really look at dream roles uh, in, in that way. I've never had that, that desire. I, I, I look forward to what somebody, somebody brilliant at writing can come up with. <laughs> yeah. No. Um, I'll just throw out that um, it's not so much a dream role, but if you know, if I were to go back to work now, um, I would really go want to go back to the theater because I grew up in the theater, and um, you know, my life took a strange turn when I wrote one on one, and um, you know, and, and started starring and writing movies. But uh, to me, there is nothing like doing theater. So, you know, if, you know, if, if that, if that would ever, you know, come along again, especially I love doing theater with my wife, Carla DeVito. So, and we, we were in Pirates together. And, and I have to say, um, for those listening, today is our 39th wedding anniversary. 39 years. Yeah. yeah and, um, you know, 40 years since we kissed for the first time, you know, wow. on the stage in front of 2,000 people. So, uh, man, <laughs> you know, that's, there's just nothing like the theater. There really isn't. And, and, the, and one of the reasons that I like theater also is you'll hear people say, you know, things about eight shows a week. For me, it's like, wait, I can do this better. I, or this moment did not work tonight. Or I didn't read the audience well. I, you know, there's, there's so many things that I adore about just work. The work of, of making a show come alive. I, I, just, I just love it. I, I, I echo that sentiment. I, I, yeah, I, I've been in shows. And yeah, it's, it's at a point where you're, you're doing the real fine tuning of, I'm going to take an extra beat before I do that. Yeah, and yeah I miss that. I miss yeah. that. And, and, it's, and it's coming back. Thank goodness. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, Bradley, got a dream role or dream? Uh, uh, Bradley, a, a, a dream project. Um, I was thinking about it during. I mean, since the question came up, and I don't. 
I feel like it would be amazing to go into uh, some of the Shakespearean work, um, but in a you know in a newer way. So I think it would be fun to play just about. I mean, any of those characters are so brilliantly written, um, but I would love to do more Shakespearean work. Um, I think that would be an interesting project and a lot of a lot of fun to try to build those characters. Nice. Very nice. You can never never go wrong with that. Absolutely. Paige, bring us home. What's the well, what's the dream well, project? Well, you it's funny you brought up Shakespeare because that's what my mother taught. So I I grew up doing Shakespeare and I loved it. It actually paid off because my first little role I got in New York was playing Juliet, Romeo and Juliet, in a little oh. tiny Broadway thing. But this is sort of a tribute to my mom. I actually played Mame in, in, in high school. Jerry Herman is a friend of mine, God rest his soul. And um, as I became like now the age I am now, I realized how much my mother was Mame. And so I think it'd really be cool to draw in a lot of what I had from my mother and play that role now that I'm in my 60s. You know, I think that that'd be fun to play Mame. I would love that. And I would love to just say, hey, Jerry, you know, he always said, when we were doing our concert tour, he always gave Karen Morrow all the Mame songs. I said, but Jerry, I'm in my 40s now. I can play Mame. No, no, no. No, no, you're Mabel and Mac and Mabel. You're too young. You're too young. <laughs> so <laughs> it would be kind of fun. You'd be a great name. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Richard. Thank you. I would definitely bring a lot of my mom into it, as well as the great Angela Lansbury, who I idolize. Um, yes. Most poor suckers are starving to death. That's right. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of my all-time favorite characters in either the book form, uh, feature film, or musical. It's just, you can't go wrong with that one. And Tony, great question. Thank you so much. I think we have time for one more, so let's see if we can go out on a really fun one. And this one comes from Al. Did any ad-libbed lines make the final cut of the movie? Or ad-libbed moments? Bradley talked a little bit about this. The, the, the spinning was sort of a, a in a moment uh, creation. Yeah, that was built out of uh, something that just happened. And actually, Chip had a few of those. Um, but uh, the sea with the spinning the tea uh, through the water. And um, also, I think you guys got to try this thing was something that sort of evolved. Like they need they knew they needed to put something there, but they didn't know what it needed to be. So that sort of became an improvised thing that got worked out in the booth um and that was you know the moment after they broke into the basement and they had to have something and they didn't you know they didn't know what to do with it so it just sort of grew and then the way they animated that bouncing on a little sp spring was fantastic yeah i love, I love david's uh, uh oh david promises you don't intend to keep <laughs> <laughs> yes stars and a ton of them oh my gosh yeah. Baroque. It's not Baroque. <laughs> 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 nice. In the one version, they released one version of Beauty and the Beast with the human again sequence. And Robbie, didn't we add live a lot of that reading scene? Oh, when you're we, reading? I think we made that up pretty much. I, you know, what's funny is that there was a time when I would remember what we had lived. Uh -huh. I can't remember anymore. <laughs> but the whole thing is just like one unit now, and it's what it is. And yeah, you know, but I really can't remember because we we did a lot of ad libs, and they allowed it. Yeah. They wanted it. They were listening. We could actually hear them laughing through the through the glass. But I, I don't even remember. It, it, it was hard. Some things that you didn't realize they were ad libbed because you know you, you'd read it one way and you read it another way, and and all of a sudden it's 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 morphing as you go, and and uh, that was one of the wonderful things. You you would lay down the script, and and then uh, uh, six weeks later they'd come back and say, okay, things have changed. Uh, you know, it, it, as this one morphed and that one morphed, they they would come back to you, and, and you know they would sort of paint themselves into a corner and we'd, we'd work the way out and and uh, and start again. So that, that was one of the thrilling things about this for me was was to to, to keep uh, watching it grow over time. Uh, the, the way they do it, you know, where they you lay it down and then you come back to it later g gave you a chance to see that, that morph and, and how it had changed uh, and to see where you might go from there. Uh, 
Uh, and playing I with think, age, playing with you know, just it was it was wonderful. To get to I think that. that's a major part of why Disney films, especially from that period, are so good and so relatable. The characters are so strong because it is that very uh, real symbiosis of the writer and the director and the actor and the even the animators all putting together this character everybody is a piece of that of that being um and it's our chance to work with the the other actor in the scene in the same place which which was un unusual as, as yeah uh for them but but we we were given that chance or i don't know maybe, perhaps some of you insisted on that chance <laughs> <laughs> that's insane age is the one that did it i did i yeah. think it's no, but that, that made a world of difference because you, you know you get to you know to be in the moment with somebody. Uh, yeah, it's a big difference. And animation took a big page from that. Uh, later on, whenever somebody uh, could do troop style, they've they've always they've always attempted to. Yeah. But you're right. It was up until then. It was very compartmentalized. All right, you lay down your tracks, and then next week the next person coming in. So, right. absolutely, panelists has been an absolute delight. Any final words for our audience before we go? <laughs> Thanks for having me. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you. Thank you. I don't want to say goodbye again because I, I, I'm loving seeing my friends on the screen right now and all of you out there. Thank you for all of you for tuning in to us today. We really we've loved it probably more than you have being able to share <laughs> stories with you. Thank you, and yeah. I hope we can talk to you soon. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Go to my YouTube channel and listen to my music. Yes. Yes. T tell us what it is, Robbie. Tell us how to yeah. find it. Yeah. Well, you can find it first by either typing in Robbie Benson YouTube channel, you know, uh, but you can uh, go to the fan page on Facebook and you'll see where to click. And the last song I wrote for Carla because and released it last night, right at our beginning of our anniversary, because it's nice. the way I feel about her. So. And I've heard the song and it's absolutely beautiful. So Thank definitely. You. Thank you. That's really kind. Thank you. It's true. Uh, it's been my absolute pleasure to serve you all here today. Once again, thank you for joining us on the GalaxyCon virtual stage. Thank you to our audience for joining us today. And thank you all so much for those great questions. Hope to see you all again soon. Until then, bye-bye, everyone. Take care. And remember, smiles are free, so spend them often. <laughs>